Hey guys, let's look at another question today. Uh, the question is last stone weight two, and the problem is one zero four nine. So the question says that you ha you are given a list of uh, a list of rocks or the array of rocks, and you have to smash any two rocks in such a way that if both the rocks have same weight, they will be destroyed. If the both the rocks have different weight, then the rock with the bigger weight will persist, and you have to reduce the weight of smaller rock. So what it means is like let's say if the if the array is given in such a way like if the array is 2, 7, 4, 1, 8, 1. So you can pick any two rock and you can smash them. So let's say I pick 2 and 7, I smash them. The value I get is 5. If I pick 1 and I pick 1, I smash them, I get value 0. So what it become what, what happens is it becomes like this 4, 5, 4, 8. So how can you solve this question in an efficient way? So the, this question has a hidden, uh, a hidden classic solution. So the, the hidden ca classic solution is using zero one knapsack problem. But how we how we how we reduce this problem into a zero one knapsack problem? So if you look closely, this question says that you have to basically smash these rocks in such a way that you can find the smallest possible weight of the stone which is remaining at the end. So what it means is that you just have to divide this array into two subarrays, subarray x and subarray y, with some let's say s1 and s2. So the sum of x subarray is s1, sum of y subarray is s2. You have to minimize the difference between the sum of this s1 and s2. So what you have to do is the answer will be minimize s2 minus s1. This is what you have to find. Now let me let me explain why this is the solution to this problem. So let's say you divide this subarray or this array into first subarray, which is let's say two one eight, and you divide this another subarray into let's say four one seven. And if you smash these rocks like this, what happens is when you smash two with four, two is destroyed and you get two here. If you smash one with one, one, one with one, you get nothing, zero and zero here. If you smash seven with eight, what happens is seven is destroyed and you get one here. So what remains is you get only one here and you get two here. The, so the sum of first subarray is one, which is S1, and the sum of second subarray is two, which is S2. And you find the difference, which will be equal to one. So the difference is one here which is the answer let's say if you if you chose some other subarrays let's say let's say if you chose let's say 2 7 1 here and you chose 4 8 1 here what will be the smashing no okay so i think i chose no so I, I think that's correct yeah so if i if i chose these different subarrays and it's my i smash it like this what happens is if i smash 2 with 4 2 is destroyed and you get 2 here if you smash 7 with 8 what happens is you get 1 here and you smash 1 with 1 you get 0 on both the sides so what is the sum here it becomes 0 what is the sum here it becomes 3 so the difference is 3 so definitely you cannot choose this combination of subarray so as you can see that this problem is re reduced into basically finding the two subarrays and minimizing the difference between the sum of these two subarrays now how can we minimize the difference between the sum of these two subarrays. So let's say the total sum s is equals to s1 plus s2. Now the way we divide this into equal half is if this is s by 2 and this is s by 2. This s by 2 s by 2 becomes total s. Now how can we minimize s2 minus s1 is or s1 minus s2 for the sake of this simplicity if you want to minimize s1 with s2 then you have to make sure that s2 reaches s by 2 so considering let's say s1 is already s by 2 how can we minimize the difference we can minimize the difference if we can make sure that s2 reaches s by 2 if s2 becomes s by 2 then the difference will be 0 so that will be the best case but if it does not 
then at least we have to maximize the value of S2 so that it reaches half of the total value. So now this problem becomes the zero one knapsack problem. What it means is that let's say you have a sack which you have to fill with rocks and the sack total is S by two. So you have to pick bunch of rocks from the array in such a way that you can maximize the sum to S by two or half of the total sum. So this becomes a classic zero one knapsack problem. Now how we can do that? We will use DP to solve this. So basically, let's say in this question it's given two, seven, four, one, eight. This is the example given. The total here is twenty-three. So the total by total by two is equals to 23 by 2 is equals to 11. So what we will do is we will try to uh, find a collection of rocks which whose sum can become 11. So we will create a DP array it's a 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 10 and 11 so this is the sum reaching to 11 now initially 0 is true that means we can obviously form a sum of 0 without, without choosing any rock now let's say we trade over this array of rocks and let's say we pick 2 <clears throat> now we will loop uh, through the sum values here and see if we can form a sum of 2 using 2 so obviously we will start with 2 we don't have to start from one because if the if the value of sum is one is less than two, then we cannot. There is no point of considering that. So this initially is false, and everything else in the array is false. So let's let's fill this first. This is the base condition where we start. Let's say we pick two and we start from two. So if if we take two as a if if we take two as a stone, can we form a sum of two? Yes. How we find that? If we subtract two minus two. We get zero so this is true so this is also possible so this can be formed now if we if we try to form a sum of three using two can we form it so what we do is we subtract three minus two we get one and we see if one is possible the sum of one is not possible so this is also not possible so what happens in this condition is we basically loop for each stones and inside this loop we reach we try to loop from the sum which start from the stone value and, and the sum reaches total by 2 so the inner loop runs from sum less than equal to total by 2 Some plus plus and the condition is if DP sum minus S is true then DP sum is true this simply means that if we if we can f we can only form a sum with a particular rock if subtracting that value of that rock from that sum and there is a value there is a value which is already present with that uh, subtracted value so for example let's say let's say if we so in this first first situation when we pick two the only possibility is this we can only form a sum of two using two we cannot form any other sum now let's say if i pick seven if i pick seven as a stone and i try to see if what are the value what are the sum which is possible using seven so this is the next situation So initially zero is true we can obviously form a sum of two using stone two so this is two true and right now everything else is false now if we pick seven let's say we picked 
7. Now we will start from 7 because obviously no other value or the value which is smaller than 7 can be formed using 7. So we start from 7. Now can we form a sum of 7 using the stone 7? Why? Yes, it is possible because we already have 0th index to be true because we can always form a sum of 7 using its own value. So dp sum which is 7 minus stone value if it is true then the dp of sum is also true because 7 can be formed using itself so this becomes this becomes true now let's say can i form a sum of 8 using 7 let's say 8 minus 7 is 1 do we have a possibility of sum 1 formed no because it is false so we cannot form a sum of 8 so this is false now let's say keep let's look at value 9 can we form a sum of 9 using stone 7 we can only form sum of 9 using stone 7 if we have a sum 2 possible so yes sum 2 is possible which is true because we already have a stone of 2 value so this becomes true can we form a sum of 10 using 7 no because there is no sum present with 3 can we form a sum of 11 using 7 no we cannot form it because there is no value 4 now let's see if we take another value called 4 or the third stone 4 can we form a sum of 4 using 4 yes we can because it itself can form it can we form a sum of 5 we are starting from 4 can we form a sum of 5 with 4 no we cannot because there is no value with 1 present can we form a sum of 6 with 4 yes we can form because there is a stone value of 2 which is true so this can be formed so in this way we try to find the maximum sum possible using the stones we have so at any point in time if we if we reach 11 or if this value becomes true then we don't have to look further in the array to find any other stone because we have already reached the maximum value possible so we, if, we, if we can reach this 11 any point in the array then we don't have to look further we can stop our iteration of the inner loop now let me code this problem and show you how this can be done in the solution in the, in the question itself in the programming way and i will also explain the time complexity so let's say if n is equals to stones dot length we will find the total value or the total sum initially zero in as we keep iterating over the over the stones we take a uh, we take a boolean uh, or the dp array just as i explained in the question and the size will be total plus one by two initial state dp0 is equals to true which means that a sum of zero is possible without picking any stone and we trade over the stones we will take a temporary array to hold the current state of the dp array we'll clone it in the temporary array And you will trade over the the dp uh, the the, st the stones value or the sum value so initially the sum starts from the stone because there is no point of looking at the stone value which are less than this sum because they will never be able to form the sum so we start from the stone value itself we go till total by 2 because that is the maximum value which we are trying to achieve we increment the sum each time by 1 now we just try to find whether this sum minus stone is true if the sum minus stone is true that means we can form this sum so it becomes true we're also trying to we will also keep a max of s2 value which simply says what is the maximum value we have found till now so max of s2 is math not max max of s2 so no the sum we have found till now 
so any if any point in time if we, this if this sum becomes total by 2 or the max s2 becomes total by 2 then we have already found the answer we don't have to look any further we can simply return the result so this will become total minus max of s2 into 2 else we will just shift the dp state to the current right now the answer is total minus max of s2 into 2 remember, remember in the in this particular example the total sum is 23 and the max s2 is 11 not 11.5 so the the difference if of 23 minus 11 into 2 is 22 is 1 that's the answer so let's see if, if this runs okay so i'm trying to clone it in the wrong format okay i chose temp okay let's pick temp here so, so this runs in this particular case let's quickly look at this solution so the the current space complexity is is order of total by two this is the space complexity in this case let's try to submit this So it is failing in this particular case. Let's see where it is failing. So DP0 is true. We, we pick the we follow the same algorithm which we discussed. We pick each stone, we clone it. The current this is the current uh, DP value. Okay, so we have to set that temp temp here, not the DP. So this is how it submits it. It passes all the cases and it's, it beats 98%. So the time complexity here in this particular case is order of order of total length into total by two. In this particular question, if you see that the constraint given is like the total length of the area is 30 and each stone can have maximum value of 100. So the total value can only go till 3000 and total by 2 can only become 1500. So the time complexity in this particular question will always be bounded by order of n into 1500 or order of n. So this is only in this particular question. Or in, based on these constraints but the time complexity in general of this algorithm is order of n into uh, space or the total by 2 so uh, this this question uh, is a really good example of how a zero one knapsack problem can be used in other ways uh, this explains uh, how you can solve a zero one knapsack problem using dynamic programming and uh, how you can use that approach in other questions like these so this is a very a very classic question and i really like this question so if you like the solution or my explanation please give this video a big thumbs up thank you